Yeah. Yeah. My my older sister is kind of a top Oh. Yeah, I don't know that I sent me. I can check them too. Do you need to announce it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's always good to announce it. Make sure that we'll tell Brian to call me or you call me. For purposes of accuracy of the minutes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to incorporate that. We don't do that. I, I, you know, I, I said a lot of things. I think it's just a given. Sometimes it would be right on the right on the yeah. I don't think so it's, you'll forget it. But. I can't remember all of them. I said oh. quite a few times. So from here on in, it's a new policy mm -hmm. habit. We're going to try to implement some more policies. Um, I had sent it around to the Board of Supervisors. We're going to yeah. try to have like a pandemic yeah. policy, like yeah. what steps to take, yeah. when to contact you, declaration of emergency, all that stuff. Yeah. We're really trying to standardize the whole process. Okay. 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 Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So just as, as much as I can do the okay. I'm going to try to do it. So. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready. So, all right. You got it. Everyone's all good. Right. All right. Calling the meeting to order. It is now 7.01 p.m. If everyone can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, just to clarify, all meetings are recorded and that's for purposes of clarification so that minute, meeting minutes can be generated at a later time. Um, you have to forgive me, I will be checking uh, our Zoom members periodically, so forgive me if I'm a little bit messed up with this tonight. Peter's the one that usually runs the meeting, so um, I'd like to uh, prove, make a motion to approve the minutes of the May 21, 2022 workshop meeting. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Um, like to make a motion to approve the minutes of May 20 set, 26, excuse me, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And a motion to approve the minutes of the June 25th, 2022 workshop meeting. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right, Treasurer's report. Um, really not much to add, forgive me. I'm gonna defer on reviewing the budget for this meeting. It's a little bit difficult for me to narrate that and all the boring numbers that everyone likes to hear without Peter actually helping me to scroll through this. I can't even get it up on the screen. So forgive me in my lack of technical assistance. I know everyone was looking forward to budget numbers. So I'll have that ready for everyone at the next meeting. Other than that, there's no unusual irregularities that I've been coming across. Um, you okay if I make the next motion, Sue? Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve payment of bills for June 2022. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. If anyone wishes to address the board, you can do so by coming up to the microphone. If you could please clearly state your name and address and sign in if you want to make any further public comments. We do have someone there. Crossroads group. Aye. Okay. He's on the agenda. Okay, you're on the agenda. Okay, let me just double check the Zoom. Someone put a message on the Zoom meeting. They're asking about the road work that's being done on Mill Creek. That's right past the bridge as we cross over from Marion to Mill Creek. There's a section of the road that's been tore up. So just to clarify, my response was that that is in fact a PennDOT road. It's not a Mill Creek Township road. So if you're driving down that way, it's not ours. It's not Mill Creek's, it belongs to PennDOT. So, yeah. Now, does anyone, is the road completely closed or is there uh, any passing on either side? No, so it was open. Yeah, it was they were gonna. They had paved it and they were gonna oil and chip it, and okay. they said it would be done by today or tomorrow. Okay. Like well, like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, okay. I just I, I found that out with a trash problem on Sharon and Robinson. Okay. Okay. You you're up next. Hi, my name is Alex Hughes. I'm with the Crossroads Group. 
Proposing is six self storage units. Each one right now contains 34 units. They are about 170 feet long by 30 feet wide. Uh, all the area around them will be paved. There will be some additional, I believe, 17 spots across the bottom here for RV and boat parking, stuff like that. Um, there is no public water or sewer required for this site. There will be no on site employees. Um, there will be a part time employee that's available uh, via call when needed for gate access or for whatever, but there will be no full-time employees. There'll be more on that later. Um, we are putting in some stormwater facilities over here and across the bottom here. I can show you that on the other plane when we get into the waivers uh, later. And then there is the required parking. We have some parallel parking across the top here um, just for any overflow parking when they're not stopped at the uh, at their beginning. We got two review letters back so far. Um, a letter from the Berks County Planning Commission dated May 17th, 2022. Uh, everything in there is it will comply. We've gotten the major thing in there um, that's a little different than a normal uh, general comment is just confirming with the water authority that this project's not good to serve any drinking water. And I did get uh, approval from them that we were looking in that situation. Uh, so we also have the McCarthy review letter dated May 18th, 2022. Um, this letter, I had a call with Craig Bonneberger from McCarthy. Mm -hmm. He, uh, we went through the whole letter, uh, hashed everything out. There's a number of waivers um, that we're requesting that I'll go through tonight. But everything else in the letter was uh, will comply. There was a couple zoning things in there, um, nothing too major. Uh, we had to move the, the dumpster out of the front yard setback from 422, so that will be up here now. And then he wanted to see some additional trees planted uh, across the back here as a buffer. So we got those added to the plan as well. Um, so I think. Probably the easiest way to do this is just go through all the waivers and then if you have any questions, do it at the end. So the first one from the McCarthy letter, uh, well, the first two kind of go hand in hand. Uh, they're from sections 5.2106 and 5.2114. Uh, basically, these waivers involve the existing roads of Canal Road and Main Street. The ordinance requires that they be improved and brought up to whatever the ordinance standard is. Um, as long as if, if it's not able to be uh, accessed with whatever traffic is going to be used on the site. Mm -hmm. So per se, if the road wasn't good enough to bring in a, an RV, then we'd have to improve the road, widen it, all that kind of stuff. Okay. And just bring it up to the standards, right away standards, all that stuff. So we're asking for a waiver from doing any improvements. The roads are adequate enough to bring any vehicles we need in. Any emergency vehicles can get access to stuff. So that's the first two waivers. Um, along those, uh, those points. We did provide a turning template to the engineer as part of the resubmission as well, showing that the roads are adequate for emergency vehicles, a 40 foot fire truck, a uh, 40 foot bus, that kind of thing. Uh, you don't have any questions about those two? No. Uh, the next waivers, three and four, also go hand in hand. They are from sections, uh, 42603 and 5.981.c. Uh, these two waivers are for doing a traffic impact study for a development. So we believe the intent of this requirement in the ordinance is for larger commercial properties where there's going to be a lot of increase in traffic, uh, lots of employees, hundreds of trips a day. We're anticipating for this site that there will be five to 10 trips a day. Um, the client has been in or the applicant's been in uh, contact with other self source facilities that are larger than this one that have like average 10 trips a day. So yeah, it's a low volume road anyway. Yeah, it's gonna be, yeah. we're not adding yeah. a, a ton of trips a day, five to 10 max. Um, I also have a letter from the, uh, from the applicant that, that states this. The first letter is about not having a full-time employee. The second one is just yeah. stating yeah, the amount of trips that Even if there was, time. I don't think it would make that much of a difference. So, so. We're asking for a waiver for doing a traffic study just because there's, there's not going to be a lot of traffic for the site. 
the next waiver kind of goes hand in hand with the traffic study, uh, waiver five. It's about a bunch of other studies. Um, there's a utility impact study, a recreation impact study, fiscal impact study, and an environmental study. So we believe it's the same thing. We're asking for a waiver for doing those studies as we think it's. Are you able to speak a little bit more into the microphone? We're having trouble hearing us. Yep. So those um, studies, we don't believe are, uh, or we don't believe our development meets the intent of the ordinance requirement. Uh, we're not going to be requiring any utilities for the site. There's no water, no sewer. It's just electric for mm -hmm. uh, security cameras, lighting, that kind of thing. Uh, recreation. I believe that part of the, the ordinance is more for like if you had on-site employees having walking trails or anything like that. Uh, and then fiscal and environmental. We're doing some environmental studies. Uh, we did a wetland study. It's going to DP. Um, we did a PINDI, so it, it was cleared of any endangered species, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. we did do some environmental studies, but we're asking for a waiver from doing uh, full-blown studies that, that could take a long time and we don't believe meet the intent of our development. So we're asking for a waiver from those. Uh, What's, what's on that property right now? So right now, this is a, this is just a field that there's corn planted right now. And then the remainder of the property over here is just a, a pasture for grazing. Okay. It's got some goats. In. So this is the lot between Highway Meat Market and Tech Me In. Oh, uh, okay. okay. The Highway Meat Market's yep. here. There's a hotel okay. right here. Is there, is there going to be access from 422? Is it strictly off of no, canal? No, strictly off the canal. No. Okay. Um, the existing driveway, we're not adding anyone, just okay. widening the existing one. So that is waiver number five. Sorry. Uh, waiver six and seven are similar to the first two waivers. Uh, anytime you do a land development or a subdivision, you're required to put in curb and sidewalk. Yeah. Um, there is no curb and sidewalk anywhere on Canal Road. And I don't believe there's curb and sidewalk on either of uh, the neighboring properties on Main Street for us either. So it doesn't really meet the, uh, the nature of the existing surroundings. And once you start putting in curb and sidewalk, it does affect the, uh, the stormwater runoff mm -hmm. and how it gets into the existing inlets, that kind of thing. So we're asking for a waiver from doing curb and sidewalk along Canal Road and Main Street. Uh, waiver number eight is section 734. Uh, and this is for shade trees along Canal Road. So kind of like the sidewalk and the curb you're required to put shade trees on any existing road. Um, as part of this plan, you're required to do a, a buffer from 4.2 and Canal Road, um, since our units are within 200 feet of the street. Mm -hmm. So they're a little tough to make out, but there is a, a number of plannings here. We're working out with the engineer what types of plannings we're putting in. Uh, we're trying to not cover up the meat market sign. Mm -hmm. Just screen it well enough to meet the ordinance requirements. So we're asking for a partial waiver, or I guess it's a waiver, um, a full waiver of this ordinance section. So we don't have to put street trees along Canal Road um, in the pasture where there's roads. Um, we're just going to supplement the existing trees on the lower side of the basin mm -hmm. here as part of the buffer. Okay. Uh, so there will be some additional planning going in along Canal Road. They just won't be street trees along, along the road itself. Mm -hmm. um, so we're asking for a waiver from the street tree part of it. Is there an existing structure that looks like it's this, up yes, to the right of the driveway? Right here that is tucked right up against the right of way, uh, the existing mm -hmm. right of way. Um, mm -hmm. That would be in the ultimate right of way if it was being offered for, for dedication, which is not this case. But yes, there's an existing building here. So we'll be planning between all these trees, just some additional evergreens. That's staying, that structure? Yes, yep, that's, that structure staying. Uh, there's no buildings being removed other than a corn crib that's part of this, uh, part of this development. Uh, that does it for the subdivision land development waivers. We do have some stormwater waivers as well. Uh, the first one is a partial waiver for, for basins A and B. Um, this, these divisions are, are very shallow. Um, they're more like swales that just have a little bit of storage, um, small burns to help promote infiltration and the DEP requirements. So a typical basin like this one, you're required to have a foot of freeboard between the high water elevation and the emergency spillway. For these two smaller square lake basins, the emergency spillway is being used to uh, transfer water. And since they're only two feet deep, having a one foot of uh, freeboard between the high water and, and the spillway isn't necessarily going to work for these basins. So we're asking for a waiver to provide 
half a foot of freeboard from the top of the berm to the, the high water in the spillway when they're being used. And this is something we discussed with the engineer. He's on board with it. And DEP was reviewing it as well. So we're asking for a parcel waiver from the section for these two basins just to provide half a foot instead of the full foot. And we're still going to be riding the full foot, uh, the larger basin. The next stormwater uh, waiver, waiver 10, is to provide two feet of separation from the BMP bottom to the limiting zone. So we had, we had good testing out here. Um, the limiting zones were pretty low, but providing two feet um, is what we're asking. That's the DEP standard. Um, they're reviewing the plan. The township requires four feet, um, which we believe is not, not necessary in this case. Um, we do have good infiltration rates. The water authority approved it, so we don't see the need to provide four feet. We're asking for two feet instead of instead of the four. And then the the last waiver is a stormwater waiver as well. This has to do with the existing storm sewer that is there. We're going to be replacing uh, three of the pipes and putting in some new inlets and culverts. The issue with this the, the canal road is it's super flat, mm -hmm. so we don't have a lot of cover. The existing inlets are, or the existing pipes are 12 inches and currently some of them are caved in. So it's not functioning properly. And I believe this pipe, the existing pipe isn't, um, doesn't even have positive flow out of it. It actually flows back towards the inlet instead of into the swell. So we've been working with the engineer to come up with a solution on how to best improve it um, and get as much cover as possible over the pipe. So we're going to still be replacing the 12 inch pipes with new 12 inch concrete pipes, uh, getting as much cover as we can and and bring in the swell as much as we can at 1%, but we're not able to increase the pipe size, so there will be a little bit of surcharge in some of the larger storms. So we're asking for a waiver from uh, meeting the surge surcharge requirement for, uh, for these uh, replaced pipes. Would you say the post-development stormwater conditions would be much improved? Yes. From yes. what they are now? So we're attracting yeah. some of the water towards yeah. the, uh, the basin, so they will infiltrate. Um, and just the fact that It'll have a positive drainage flow. There will be a, it currently flows down the swale and into our property here. So as part of the resubmission, there will be a, a swale that continues here in a bypass pipe to get it around our basin. So we're not overloading the basin. But yeah, it will, it will definitely improve the situation out there now. These inlets will be able to take on water unlike they are now. And hopefully get it out of at least that curve. This will all be paved? Yes, so the whole, the whole uh, driveway will be paved. The only part that's not paved is the the parking for the mm -hmm. RVs and buses. That part will remain stone. Yeah, front of the units and behind the units. All yep, paved. that's all paved. All right. here, but not of which we can't do Good. Sensor. Where's all the impervious runoff going to the to the side? Of? So um, it kind of sheets. This part here sheets slowly to the north. There's a swale that comes along here, and then another swale that comes here. So it's going to mostly sheet flow. These will sheet flow across the middle, and this will sheet flow down into these uh, two basins. And then once it gets into the swell, be directed to a basin. Or these uh, two will outflow and kind of come down here as well. We're going to be putting the berms so that the water coming out of the east goes to our basin to be treated. And then the bypass from water from the, the storm sewer will go around the basin. Do you have any other concerns? Be better than it is now. Yeah. So all they're asking for tonight is uh, waiver. These waivers. These waivers. Yeah. Because yeah. planning commission still has to review. It. Yes, of okay. course. Jim, do you have any other concerns? Yeah. Andy, do you have any other concerns? I mean, to me, it seems like the plan has been very well thought out, and uh, everything's been reviewed. And I guess I understand it's going to whatever revisions that planning commission wants to make will be reviewed on the July nineteenth meeting. So yeah, we resubmitted last either yep. Monday or last week or something. Monday. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Kelly, did you have a question? Yes. Did you say the driveway. It's very hard to see. <laughs> The driveway will be on Canal Road. Yeah, so the existing driveway that's there now to get up to the barn, we're just going to widen it. Um, okay, on the north side of the barn. That driveway? On uh, the west side. So the west, west side. side. The, west side of the, the west side of the barn, yeah. Okay. So there's a corn crib now that will be coming out. Right in the corner, there's a corn crib. Right. So it's just going to be wider. So it's going to go from where it is now that, towards that loading dock, and the corn crib kind of split those and come up around the side of the property. I don't have a problem. Yeah, I mean, everything's gone through. The engineers reviewed it. So, also on the north side of the yeah. Barn, right? this, yeah, the north side of the barn. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's it's understandable. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Can you give me the full title of the what CWP stands for? Sure. We we could just go with CWP then. Yeah, CWP is fine. Okay. So that was worked out. Okay. Okay. Uh, CWP on Sanford. Like Commonwealth or Parkway? No. It's okay. So I'll go in development. That would be yeah. development. It's okay. When are you, when are you, yeah. when are you planning on being fully operational? It hasn't been approved yet. Yeah. Okay. It's not been approved. Okay. So we're hoping nice. to have more approvals by the end of the year. I thought, yes. I thought last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the things, we know things take time. So, all right. Are you okay if I go ahead and make the motion? So I'll make the motion for the following uh, waivers at the CWP pro project at 37 Main Street, section 5.2106 for road improvements and reconstruction, section 5.2114 for street widening, section 4.2603 for the traffic study, section 5.981C traffic study, section 5.982 utility, recreation, fiscal, and environmental impact study, Section 7.23, curbing. Section 7.24, sidewalks. Section 7.34, landscaping along Canal Road. Section 304B, to allow for a half foot of freeboard and selected BMPs. Section 307B1A, to allow for two feet of bottom of BMP and limiting zone bedrock and section 304E to allow regrading and replacement of storm sewer pipe for positive drainage patterns. Second. Roll call, Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks. That was very, Thank God you very helpful. Putting, Thank God you weren't putting a 10 by 14 shed on there. Yeah. <laughs> we had that last month. Yeah. yeah. And the month before. All right. All right, next item on the agenda is the road projects for the 2022 culverts. The box culverts were put out on pen bid with bids open June 23rd at 1 p.m. And we will be awarding the bids tonight. Three bids were received to design, fabricate and deliver culvert, including shop drawings. For Reichert Road, the bid was for Monarch Products $86,760. Kevin E. Raker Construction, $124,633.69 and Construction Master Services LLC for $170,000. The project on Marion Drive South, the bid was Monarch Products $80,824. $80, Kevin Raker Construction $110,639.15. Construction Master Services $165,000. For the project on Sheridan Road, Monarch Products, $101,445. Kevin E. Raker Construction, $127,082.74. Construction Master Services, $205,000. And Marion Drive North, Monarch Products, $89,598. Kevin E. Raker Construction, $140. $1,377.56 and construction master services for $175,000. The totals for all the four culverts are as follows. For Monarch products, $358,627,000. Kevin E. Raker construction, $502,733.56. And construction master services seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Is that enough numbers for everyone? Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to award the bid to Monarch Products for the sum of three hundred fifty-eight thousand six hundred twenty-seven dollars. Second. For all four projects. For all four projects. Second. Wait, 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 wait. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I'd much rather have spent that money on something else, but. Yeah, yeah but my question is, uh, if they don't get shot right away, so they can't 
think I better. Have <laughs> I have a Zoom response to that gentleman's presentation. So they're concerned about canal road not being fixed, but that's not part of the project. Well, the, yeah. so the plan has not been approved by planning commission right. yet. They're still reviewing it. Yeah. Um, so they still have to review the stormwater management plan, yeah. which is part of the, part of the plan itself. Yeah. So that will all be reviewed, but it shouldn't have the effect that it would have on the rest of the canal road would be an improvement of any, of any stormwater. Well, if they're going to replace the culverts the right there, right? right. Yeah. yeah, they're catching the water. But the project is impacted the road itself, and there's no mm -hmm. traffic that's going to get correct. So, does Canal Road be done though? Yes, all the roads need to be done. Canals, it's horrible. Well, there has or some of you disagree. Now, sheriff's sure. department, we could use a million dollars. Yeah, well. Just to do roads. This may go back to history, but my understanding is the state and the state maintained maintain the run account. That was a state road, shared owners of a state road up through, and the township took that over. I don't know if that one was. I know that the township took over quite a few roads because my dad was supervisor at the time. And I mean, you're talking 40, 45 years ago. Yeah. Right? And uh, I don't think it's in that one. The super, I know the supervisor of the county, he told me that. My question is, what do we, oh, we certainly got money. We get, we road. get turned back money. So what's the road? <laughs> it, that money road. doesn't go up. It's uh -huh. a, that money never goes up. It's a flat amount that we get. Yeah, the turn back allocation, yeah. yeah. But then they give a yearly amount because they used to maintain it. We, we get turn back money. Yeah, but the turn back money is like roughly $110,000. For all of the roads that we took over. Yeah. Yep. 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 <clears throat> no, <clears throat> no. Yeah. Yeah. No, because the cost, the cost is not kept up with what funding we receive. I mean, it, it's insane to think you could fix a road for 110,000. So no, costs have not met uh it they're not keeping up with the money we get so and that's well right but but that's but that's the problem that we're facing right now and that's something that we're trying to be very proactive about i've been trying to look at funding to fix uh was at the workshop meeting we were talking about this how can we actually launch a project to fix about 15 miles of road within the township? And that's quite a bit of an undertaking. And I've been trying to reach out to other communities as well as other agencies to see how we could get that money. I have looked at federal agencies, state, local, everything that I could find. And hopefully we're gonna be working with someone who does grant writing and trying to seek what money we can. Ultimately, it might come down to having to borrow money with a known budget of roughly $600,000 a year coming into the township, we have to be extremely careful with what we do. These culverts, this is going to eat up our money that we have currently in that checking account. So we have three separate accounts to fund each project. And the only reason we have an excess of funds is because during COVID, no projects were done. So for two years, money has just been going into those accounts without any activity. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of neglect and we're treading water right now. So. We're hoping to get on a proactive list rather than a reactive, but right now we're just we're just plugging up holes. So we're trying to figure it out and any input and any good information you want to provide, I'm more than happy to listen if you come across something. But I've, I've reached out to someone who does uh, grants and I guess this gentleman has about 98% success rate. And I've been actively searching at the workshop meeting. We were also talking about having just a college student who's interested in coming in just to help out to help us kind of take over that because there's such a large volume of work in here. It's, I know I'm behind this week, you know, there's, there's always stuff to do. We're trying to hire an assistant secretary. So trust me, we're looking. And the last thing I want to do is saddle anyone in this township with debt, especially debt that we can't handle. We don't want to raise taxes, but it's kind of like this situation, I, you know, we're trying, trust me. Um, so I apologize to anyone on Zoom. Can, I hope you could hear me. I've been typing some responses. One hundred and ten thousand dollars forty-five years ago was a right. lot of money. That, that was 
45 years ago, I think I made about $7,000 a year. I make a little more than that, though. thank God. But yeah, and there, it's, it's a shame that there wasn't inflation, an inflation bonus put into that somehow, but yeah. there wasn't. So. Kelly, you had a... Yes, do you know when work will begin for the fall works or when the explanation will start the project? Which just gave me a geez. So we, we have a um, permit for Reichert Road and we have we got the permit for Sheridan. We did not get the other two permits yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's bog turtle habitat, yeah. so you can only do it between November first and March. Well, we just well, awarded we the bids tonight. So, so once that goes through, we can start work once materials are here and Butch has everything organized. So, so we don't have to wait for all. no, no, not at all. I don't think Butch wants four projects at once. <laughs> so, all right. I, I put the moving funds on. No, yep. That, yep. No. Uh, um, my question was. Uh, I would assume so if we've already agreed to the bid and so we send them notice that we've agreed to this bid price so they would have to yeah they would have to that's part of yeah. the impact of the contract to have that number in there as well oh, that, that's a smart question yeah okay so I'm gonna hold off on as far as moving funds for right now, I think we're okay. All right, next item is um, 160 Sheridan Road, the agricultural security area proposal. This was submitted to Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County. Part of this farm is in Marion. So we received a notice from Mill Creek about a project that it's is it it's currently under ag preserve is that correct I know I read it the other day is it under ag preserve in our no, part they're applying for ag preserve, they're applying for ag preserve. yeah so th this came from the solicitor of Mill Creek Township and uh it's the Steiner farm which is really most most of it's in in Lebanon yes Mill Creek. yeah yes and John Ink, who wrote the letter, called me about this. I talked to him a little bit. And neither of us knew the answer at the top of our heads. So we both had to open the books. Um, I, I disagree with what he's saying in here. He's saying that because this property is in a different county, that it prohibits the inclusion of the entire property into Mill Creek's ag security, mm -hmm. ag security area. We think. The Ag Security Act says just the opposite. Um, we think it's automatically put into their Ag Security area because the primary residence is located in Mill Creek Township. Okay. So, because when we read the letter, we thought it was it was a little bit unusual. We thought they they were asking the um, the township to make the determination over the zoning, and we're like, we don't do that. That that's something that. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't have anything to do with zoning. It's it's actually a state act that allows okay. Okay. property owners to apply to have their property put in an ag security area. Okay. So it offers them basically farming protections. Yes. Yes. Um, so, but we don't lose any. I know Peter right. was concerned about yeah. what do we lose if we say okay. Um, we, we really don't lose anything. There's no okay. tax revenue or anything that's lost. Right. So, so there's just going to be a little bit of back and forth between you and the solicitor from Mill Creek to clarify the language and make sure everyone's understanding the same thing then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I'm surprised it's on the agenda for next month too. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, there's no so, rush. I'm glad we were confused. So we so forwarded it to you. So was I. Okay. That makes me feel a lot better. That's what it was. That's okay. No, thank you. All right. Next item is Stonecroft Village. A meeting was held on June 3rd, 2022 with the HOA. Stone Group, Lyons and Hole, McCarthy Engineering, and Kozlov Stout all agreed that the issues and complaints regarding the curbing, streets, clubhouse, and et cetera are between Stonecroft, HOA, and Stone Group. Paving has begun on Loganberry and Sweet Birch. 
Final paving sealing should be completed by the end of week on Copper Beach, Loganberry, Rosebush, Sweet Birch, and William Penn. And they sent us yeah, a number of pictures and it looks good. It's beautiful. Yeah. Is it finished? They, Is did, it? they did an excellent okay. job and uh, most of the residents that I've talked to are very pleased. Good. And I've driven on it a couple of times just to make sure. And it is, it's like a, you could, you could land an airplane. Yeah. It's beautiful. Good. The gentleman from, hey, it's, it's nice. It looks good. The gentleman from the paving company that was there that day was, was sharp. Uh, you could tell it wasn't his first rodeo, uh, but he was very knowledgeable about the process and answered all the questions and had a pretty good rapport with everybody that was there. So it was a good meeting. I think the road situation now is behind us. They can argue, though, again, if there's some more arguing to do there on some other issues, as you know, but at least that's behind us. I guess Peter's been on Zoom responding to some of the remarks, so thank you, Peter. Um, next item is stormwater management waiver Peter, request. Peter's on Zoom. Yeah, I guess. What time yeah. is it in Madrid? I don't, it's six hours, seven hours, six, seven hours ahead. Yeah. He's diligent. He's in Madrid. Yeah. Um, stormwater management waiver request for 114 Rosebush Court. Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Morris submitted a permit application to erect an 8 by 10 shed on their property and have requested a waiver of the stormwater management. The motion was made at the workshop meeting to approve this waiver request. Okay, next item, stormwater management waiver request for 285 Sweet Birch Lane. Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Brown submitted a permit application to erect a 10 by 14 shed on their property and have requested a waiver of the stormwater management. The motion was made at the workshop meeting to approve this waiver request. Okay. And we are working on changing that storm stormwater management ordinance because according to the ordinance, they should have stopped building at Stonecroft about five years ago. It's an old ordinance. So I was hoping yeah. to have that tonight, yeah, I'm sure but you I ran out of time. That's okay. But That's I had okay. a draft yeah. in process. Yeah, we're managing the, the issues for right now, but yeah, yeah, definitely needs to be clarified. We'll have that by next meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right, the next item is the MS4 permit waiver. This is the municipal separate stormwater sewer systems. Our waiver, which is issued by the DEP, will expire in 2023. We want to keep the waiver status as long as possible because there are lots of requirements and costs in having an MS4 permit rather than a waiver. The motion was made at the workshop meeting to have McCarthy Engineering go ahead and prepare the waiver request. And we got an email, they need a check and then they'll submit the paperwork. No Peter problem. To, when Peter comes back, he can sign it. Sure, sure. I will be in the, the office paperwork. tomorrow and so uh, get that done. And that'll be done. Okay. Next item is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding. We received a revised document with some changes in the language and responsibilities. The motion was made at the workshop meeting to sign the BCCD MOU with changes. Next item is the Canal Road Bridge north of 422. This is owned by the County of Berks. We received a letter from McCormick Taylor of Exton, PA, indicating that they have applied for a DEP GP 11 permit to repair the bridge. Apparently they're required to notify the municipality that they're applying for the permit. So it's another DEP project, excuse me, it's a, it's a County of Berks project. We don't really have to worry about it. Number 10, um, Tulpahawken Forge Road Bridge Floodplain Consistency Request. Why are these all tongue twisters? <laughs> This was made by RET2 engineers on behalf of PennDOT to identify the floodplains within the project area, determine the impacts of any, and coordinate concurrence with the local municipality. The motion was made at Saturday's workshop meeting to forward the request to McCarthy Engineering. Just another housekeeping item. Uh, the next item is the PSATS 401A plan. This is in order to maintain the qualified status of Marion Township defined contribution plan we must adopt certain amendments required by the IRS to ensure that our plan continues to comply with all current laws. We will need to adopt a new version of our plan document, the plan restatements, and a new resolution needs to be adopted and the adoption agreement needs to be signed. Andy, are you reviewing these documents for us? Yes, I did, Thank you. I did review them. Okay. Uh, they have, this resolution has to be passed no later than July 31st. Okay. So we, we can wait till next meeting. I, I can give you a really short 
kind of executive summary. Okay, on the no email, problem. Maybe, so. Shouldn't be a problem. I think if it, even are we able to do that at the workshop? So make sure it's done beforehand. Yes. So if you have it done for us, we could review it and get it done at the workshop then. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next item: IRS mileage increase. Yay. Uh, recently, the IRS recommended to increase mileage to 62.5 cents. The motion was made at Saturday's workshop meeting to adopt IRS increased mileage at the rate of 62.5 cents. And just to let everyone know, we seldom, if rarely, have anyone even use our mileage because we really don't go anywhere. So, okay. And that took effect, takes effect tomorrow. Yep. yep. So it's half a year on the old mileage rate then beginning tomorrow, yeah. six months on the new mileage rate. Thank you. Next item for discussion is the Tulpahawken Police. Uh, tickets need to be purchased from, from, for Marion Township's usage, essentially. Um, we can get 100 tickets from Little Mounting Printing for approximately $167. The motion was made at Saturday's workshop to authorize Little Mountain Printing to print tickets up to the cost of $200. I've already contacted them and that was that has gone through. So you guys will be receiving tickets from Marion. Well, and I, he's uh, gonna uh, review it because the one she sent me has Topa Hawkins name at the top okay. and address at the bottom. So we just need to find out if they need to put- power. Anything different on it. Stuff okay, it. Yeah. yeah. And I called over to the office and I spoke to the chief as well to let him know. Um, I discussed at uh, the workshop meeting also with making a donation to the Tulpe Police Department to cover various cost increases and possible purchase or, up, or assist with the upgrade of their police vehicle. We had uh, floated around the idea of about $2,500 to assist with the increase in cost of fuel, but uh, because we know a lot of the guys are actually coming into Marion Township beyond their contract hours, I'll see these guys in my neighborhood at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and they're only contract till 11 p.m. I mean, wonderful service that they provide to us, and if we could assist them with their unanticipated, unforeseen costs when it comes to fuel costs. We had briefly discussed about making a contribution that could be used at their discretion, um, but fuel cost was was at the top of my list there. And again, I spoke with Chief Brian about that as well. Yeah. So there's a number of days during the week now, but we are till one, yeah. two, yeah. three, three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So we want to do everything we can to help support you guys as much as possible. And again, earlier when I was talking about the grants and stuff, again, um, we want to see what we could do to help assist you guys with getting a vehicle. Brian had spoken with my husband. I, I had no idea the two guys even knew each other. Um, he, my husband didn't realize who he was because he wasn't in his regular clothes. He was in his police outfit and he realized he knows him for years as an assistant fire chief up at Summit Station. So it was really rather funny. Um, but, but having just this casual conversation, um, just like us, you know, we were handed some problems we didn't know about until we got to it. So whatever we could do in support of your department, because you provide a wonderful service to us. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. 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 I had, I had one ninja that was at 102. Wow. Yeah, it is pretty much a drag strip there. So again, like I, I'm sure I'll be calling the office a lot more saying, Hey, we found this, we found that. Let's let's talk about what we can do to help you guys. Because a college student that, that's been talking to me is interested in helping out as much as she can. So all right. The next item, this may seem frivolous, but Berks County Public Library offered us a, a book box. We received an email from Stephanie Williams about asking if they could put a Burke's book box on our playgrounds. My concern was who's going to maintain the box. I don't know if you guys are aware of the little free libraries. There's one that's up at Twilight Acres. I think there's one that was at Daryl's and there's one that's next to Boyer's. So technically the two that are over at Daryl's and the one at Twilight Acres are within our community. And that's sponsored by the Womelsdorf Community Library. With the little free libraries, they have what's called a steward. So that's someone who's responsible for periodically checking up on the box to make sure there's no trash in it, there's no inappropriate materials. The Berks County book box does not have that feature, so to speak. They just put the book box there and they leave it alone and they, no one checks up on it. So it's, it's no cost to us. It's not really maintained by the county library. Um, it doesn't have that feature that the, the little free libraries do that... Um, the Wormelsdorf is sponsoring. It's up to you. I mean, did you want it? Do you not want it? 
it is, it's much more attractive than the ones that are homemade by Homersdorf mm -hmm. Library. But so, yeah, I'm a little concerned about. Yeah, because when we stopped over the one by Twilight them? Acres, there was uh, um, streamers in there. There was some oh. other materials. There was, there was basically some trash in there. So, I mean, if we want it, I'll, I'll give her a call or send her an email. If we don't want it, then we could, I'll, I'll do the same. What's your feeling? Yeah. I'm ambivalent, to be honest. I am too. I. Do you want to wait for the next meeting and see Let's what Peter thinks? Let's wait till the next meeting. We so we'll see about, about for the next meeting. I just, I just don't like any opportunity for vandalism and, and abuse and one more thing that we have to clean up. So it might, might seem silly, but all right. Um, next item for discussion is the township engineer proposal. The only proposal we received so far was from Craft Engineering. Again, there's just something to review again, and no motions will be made right now. Um, Final input. I think we could probably do that the next meeting. We'll be able to review all that. Their rates are lower. Yeah. Next item is the Main Street traffic study. This was performed for stop signs at Church in Maine, Water in Maine, Sharf in Maine, and they were all performed by traffic planning and design. The report was received, and we're going to continue to review this. And I think, Andy, you had some input. I did. Um, I talked to Greg Richardson from traffic planning and design. And it looks like church in Maine is a possibility okay. for, for a couple stop signs. And um, there are two there now mm -hmm. this way, but we're talking about the two on Main Street. So uh, Greg was going to provide us with a drawing because there would have to be some parking eliminated. Okay. He said like uh, we two, know the park 250 feet in one direction and 195 in the other. Yeah. I can't remember which. I mean, do, do we have a lot of people parking along those, that, those areas? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I hate to say it's a give and take. Everyone wants the traffic to slow down. One way the traffic's going to slow down is by a stop sign. That's going to increase safety, but we're going to cause some people to have an inconvenience, but. Yeah. So he'll have that drawing just so you can kind of see okay. what it looks like and how many actual spaces mm -hmm. would be needed. Okay. And then we'll and have it, that by next meeting. Right. And it still doesn't prohibit us from putting in crosswalks and signage for crosswalks as well. Right. So, I mean, I think that's important too. It's hard to believe we need 250 feet. Um, and that would be a church in Maine. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've been in cities where there's, you're lucky if there's 15 feet. Right. Yeah. I don't understand. It, it, that, it, it, I, it might not be, that might not meet, you know, guidelines. <laughs> right. I don't know. Right. I'm not a traffic engineer, but that's what he told me. I just saw a filler guy out there that said yesterday morning, and the bicycle never stopped at the stop sign. He moved straight through that to hit the front of him. Wow. He was, he was second for eternity, and I guarantee you, scared of crap. No stop sign on Main Street, and he got this other stop. They blew right through it, and they stopped. I do that, that's not the speed on Main Street. Yeah, we're just trying to slow people down. Yeah. I mean, Peter's responding to everything on Zoom. Thank you again, Peter. We're and also, so, yeah, some of the concern is that that some people see that there's not a lot of activity in Stouchburg, but it doesn't take away from the fact that people like to park outside their homes. But, you know, so we have two competing interests. I think... Uh, we, we have seen an increase in accidents. There was a fatal, what, last year? Mm -hmm. And so the, the big problem is that people just continue to use the Main Street as, as another drag strip where they come off of 422. How fast can we come through town? How, you know, how fast can we blow through? Um, I, don't, I don't often see the large trucks come through. So, I mean, I, I want to see safety increased uh, because our community still continues to grow. It's grown by over 200 people since the last census. And I think it'll continue to grow. And again, trying to anticipate future needs, not just what we see now and trying to have that foresight. We know that there's restrictions on housing and when it comes to low density and medium density residence areas. So we're not gonna see any big developments, but people have children and people buy houses, et cetera. So what we can do to increase safety and try to anticipate what this town may look like in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years is impacted by the decisions we make today. And I think we're all cognizant of that. And we want to improve and increase safety for our citizens that like to walk around and like to cross the street and not get run over or hit by a car. So 
I know this is a question for Peter, but have we heard from anybody about the the, the line painting? Oh. We're supposed to put in crosswalks, and we were going to put those. Did you hear those, anything? Uh, no, we no, need to contact them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's put a little heat on them because yep. that, that was supposed to be done last year. And then yep. once those are in, we need to order those. The ballers. Those, those, yeah, those posts that yeah. say, you know, pedestrian crossing slow down. That'll help. And then I know Peter and uh, uh, Peter Wallace are looking into fixing that sign that's in the garage. And if they can't fix it, we're going to then discuss putting up one of those ones like they put in Wilmersdorf. Oh. It tells you how fast you're going and slow down and well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So. Irene, who's on, who's on Zoom? Three people. Um, I see Francis, Steve, Joker, and Peter, actually. We're, okay. So Dan went off? Yeah. Okay. I think we have. Isn't the line painting been paid for? I don't know. You have to ask Marie. I don't know. I think no, I don't think they. I don't think they go so much. Like, no, I, I really do. We get that. for line painting. That was paid for last year. Yeah, okay, but that's not, what I yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they need, but to, only for what we paint, right? I have well, to look supposed at to it. The sidelines on. Yep, the they're supposed to, walk, the, yep. they they're in, supposed to do center. everything. Yeah. 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 They're supposed to do everything. So if you could get on them, Butch, as soon as possible. Yeah, appreciate it. On. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I Yep. Yep. <sighs> How much do those weigh? A lot. A lot. How much do they weigh? Do you know offhand? Can we can we limit the, the weight on the on Main Street? Probably not. Well, uh, yes, I believe we can. More of an engineering question, but I think there's a traffic study that would be required. But I'd have to defer to our engineer on okay that. yeah that small traffic study cost seventy five hundred dollars i know yeah all right everyone ready to move it's on to be a study of the road itself too. yeah of course you know i'm still a big believer and put up the sign and ask for forgiveness later no <laughs> all right next item for discussion is office equipment peter is currently working on obtaining another printer and scanner for moving the treasurer's desk over into the aa room so that Sue can have more space that's desperately needed and hopefully be able to accommodate an assistant uh, secretary. The next item is the proposed dog leash and curbing ordinance. Andy, you're still taking a look at that? Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, next item is the Western Berks joint, joint Zoning Ordinance, section 403. And this is in reference to the keeping of pets. Again, Andy, I'm assuming you're reviewing this. Um, yeah, this, that's the, that, that's yeah. the one where I the keeping I of chickens upon yeah. long swamp townships yep. zoning ordinance and it looked like something that we would consider so i think that that's probably i don't know if you had that discussion yet yeah we did at the workshop meeting yeah yeah, yeah. and because so there was a concern about the shelters and the coops in the run areas not being located in the front yard area because mm -hmm. some are mm -hmm. and then there's also a a minimum of one acre for mm -hmm. two, which mm -hmm. I didn't know if that was mm -hmm. something that you're looking for. We have to modify. We have to reduce well, we, that. we have, that's yeah. exactly what we want to modify. It was what section 403B. Yep. And so lots of our residents in town don't meet that requirement. And lots of our residents do keep animals. So uh, chickens, like a couple of chickens. And so that's exactly what we want to modify. So we know that it has to go through joint planning. And so that's just something we, ha we have to change. But I'll just, yeah. need, I'll just need guidelines and we can okay. use the long swamp example, I think, as the guideline. Okay. You guys can pick and choose what you want. And okay. Then just let me know and we can okay. turn it into a proposed does, amendment. Does that have to go through our planning commission first? Like each individual's planning commission first? Well, it has to be, not necessarily, but it has to be offered to them for review. Okay. They might okay. have no comments at all. Okay. okay. So, that make it easier then? But, but it has to be sent out to them. And then it has to be approved by the, uh, yes, by the, it has to be reviewed by the Joint Planning Commission. 
It doesn't have to be approved by them. They could find that it's, you know, they could recommend it not be approved, I guess. Right. But okay. um, then it has to go before each board. And in our case, as right. you know, we meet as one group. Yes. Uh, which is really hard to plan, but right. it makes it easier and cheaper right. because you're only advertising one one, time. one meeting. But I think, you know, they might have a similar problem and not really realize it. So they may have the same exact situation where they have someone who keeps a couple of chickens on their property and the property is less than that uh, acreage minimum. So they might encounter that Right, too. right. North yeah. Heidelberg might like it. The uh, sooner yeah. the better Heidelberg. if you can yeah. get that done. Yeah. We just need to reduce, it can't be an acre because most of these lots on, on Main Street, there's, Are not, yeah. there's, a, there's over a dozen people on Main yeah. Street chickens. Yeah. And they're lucky if they've got yeah. a quarter. Right. So at this point, we're choosing to not enforce that section of, of the code um, because of, of the current situation. So um, if someone's received the notice, we're just saying, no, we're not enforcing that section of the notice. The, some of the other things we're in that ordinance, we want fences, pens, you know, a running area, whatever. Right. You might not need yeah. a minimum acre. Right. Yeah. At it's all. Just, that's the, that was the main stumbling point was the, mm -hmm. was the acre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other, the other part of it, control of the animal is, is something that yeah. a little bit, I've incorporated that back into our, our leash law and yeah. uh, animal ordinance, because you still have to be in control of your animals. And so excrement from your animals should not be on your neighbor's property. You're allowed to have chickens, but they can't poop where they want to poop. So you and have to have control over them. that's where the complaints have right. come from. Is right. The chickens and goats. they're going next door. Yeah. Of course, they're also laying a couple eggs over there. They're not complaining about the eggs. They're not right. complaining about the yeah. food. Uh, no, I, I, I think in some way, animals, they are out to the Right, you have to, you have to be a responsible owner yeah, for them. Be responsible. Right, you know, right. You know, a big farmer, uh, in that case, you can have his cows or right. goats or anything, big farmer or not. Yeah, so what I'll do, I guess, I think I said this in the email, I'll, I'll start putting something on paper. Thank you. And then Thank that you. way we'll have yeah, just to modify it. something better to talk yeah. about and look at. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Because if you make it easy for people, they're more likely to agree. Yeah. Thank you. All right. The next item for discussion is the cold summit invoice. And this is something I know I've emailed you about um, prior to the deal being uh, called off with cold summit. Uh, we were told that they would pay invoices and they did pay invoices and bills that were sent at their request. They requested um, for the engineer, uh, you and the board to attend meetings. And so uh, once the deal was called off, they declined to pay those bills. But these bills were sent to them before the deal was called off. So I think I know, you, what was the guy's name? Matt something? Matt Anderson. Yeah. And he did call and leave a message at the office. I didn't return any calls him because I didn't have time. Have Just you had? Okay. Have, did you have any other communications with him? Nope. So the last call I had was with Matt Anderson. I said that the township expected to be paid. Yeah. That's how and nothing it works further. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe it doesn't work like that where you're from, but uh, yeah. That's how we do it. I don't think they okay. do. Yeah. Right. So, so there was a little bit of problem with Wormelsdorf, and it was a, as a personnel problem so they had a shifting of personnel so we were sending emails and making phone calls another phone calls went through whatever i kept them trying to call hold about five or six times it never went through so someone had recently left their position i spoke to the new person taking over we're going to be sending half of the um traffic study to them they're going to reimburse us so our, our portion of it should be little, yeah. like around four thousand dollars or so again this is this is something that cold summit asked us to do and now that the deal's off they're not happy about receiving the bills can i ask you to reach out to them one more time see what their response is sure thank you i appreciate that well i hate to eat that kind of money if their responses are not going to pay it then yeah start with legal action well how much is they that going to cost pay. us we'll have to make a yeah. we'll have to do a cost benefit analysis. right right because if it's going to cost us ten thousand dollars to get reimbursed for a four thousand dollar bill it's not worth then it then it'll cost them fourteen thousand dollars put your fees in there but it doesn't always maybe work that's, like Maybe that. that's the threat to give yeah. them. You know, either pay the 4,000 or we'll take it to court and you'll pay us 14 because you don't have to pay my legal fees. There was no contract. So th there's a lot to that. So um, the next item for, for on the agenda is another question for you, Andy. Um, there was, a, there was no sorry. contract for that, but it was, we approved it at a meeting, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 
At their request. At their request, but there was no contract. It was just a verbal agreement, and those things have a hard time holding up in court. Um, it's tough to get. It's yeah. tough to get. They only they only paid one prior bill, and that prior bill was not that much. So there's no past performance. There's no um, recognized behavior. There's there's no pattern there. So, yeah, I know everyone. Well, then we were we were misled, yeah. and I was misled as we, to what, we, we what, we were, were. what we were getting paid yeah. for. I, I was told that it's, it shouldn't be a problem. Right, we were all told I, that. No, no, yeah. I was told that recently after this guy Matt Anderson said mm -hmm. that they they were reluctant to pay. I was told by their lawyer in Harrisburg that it shouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I'm going to call. If, if you could give them another call. And if there's anyone else we should be sending it to, um, because uh, if, if, it, if you could get us the contact person to forward it to, because I may be just sending it to the wrong person. So. Okay. so the next item for discussion is we send out notices of violation to people that are not compliant with the International Property Maintenance Code. And we receive a bill from Craft Code for their services for going out there. Just to explain to everyone else. Can we bill the residents for those notices of violation? Uh, yeah, we can't. We can't pass on those costs. The rent is fine. Okay, so we can't pass on those costs. No. Okay. All right. So that's for Dan. Thank you, Dan. So um, the next item is the amendment to the IPMC ordinance, uh, section one zero six point four, the violation penalties to increase the fines. This was advertised in the Reading Eagle on June 20th, 2022. And the amendment will be in the ordinance 2022-2. Uh, Do you hear anyone speaking? Can I read? tonight. So I need to read that out as a motion? Okay. How would you like me to title that? The amendment to the IPMC ordinance? Um, adopt the amendment. Okay. Like to make a motion to adopt the amendment to the IPMC ordinance 2018-3. Uh, the new amendment will be the ordinance 2022-2. Second. Roll call, Peter. No, I have Peter's not here. Peter's That's okay. Here. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. I forgot to take him off. <laughs> And that was much needed. We haven't got a report lately on any of the properties, but well, we get that once uh, a month. I did know that I did notice that some of them are making progress. Mm -hmm. so that's good news. Everybody for Except the for the one, but while we're on it, I was going to bring it up during comments. But does anybody know what's going on with John Sowers? And that property behind uh, there. Uh, I believe that property might be going up for sale. I had a call from the realtor. That's still quite a mess. And I well, was by there the other night and the generator was running again. Um, Craft Codes told me that they believe he was evicted, um, went to court, to, you know, was evicted. Um, but Craft didn't know the eviction laws. I don't know the eviction laws. So. I know he's still there. Yeah, he's still I driven by in the morning and the generator's running. What do we do? Nothing. I don't understand. The the property owner tried to evict him. Mm -hmm. And it went the, to a judge. And the judge said yes. for some reason. Oh, the judge, judge said, yes. said did he but appeal? He's still it? There. Well, maybe maybe he appealed it. Maybe it's now in the Berks County trial court. So how many days do you have to appeal? You had 10 days from the day of the judgment for eviction to appeal it. So maybe he's passing. That maybe it's in the court system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully that gets resolved. Or they just haven't taken the next step to forcibly evict him. Okay. You have to get an order for possession. The uh, property owner needs to do it. The property owner would have to do it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. The next item for discussion is the holding tank ordinance and agreements. Our SEO reviewed the ordinance and agreement and again and said our ordinance looks good. Going forward, any new holding tanks that are put in will need a holding tank agreement, which he will prepare on a case-by-case -case basis and have Andy give his approval. 
he will document the properties with existing holding tanks and then we'll do yearly inspections. So no new agreements are needed for the existing tanks. Anything new will require an agreement. So that, I think I was a little bit confused about that at first and now that's been clarified. So, and unfortunately a lot of these tanks haven't been inspected, but with the program that, that um, Alan's implemented, we're going to have that pretty much on a, on a four year cycle, which will be great for us. All right, the next item is Act 537. Uh, Alan SEO is currently doing inspections in the Northwest District. We did recently receive a letter from Tig Tim Wagner at the DEP requesting an update on the status of our Act 537 plan implementation. And there are milestones that are coming due. We are under an order of the department to implement the approval of the official plan. Failure to implement our plan in accordance with the implementation schedule may subject us to civil penalties under section 13.1F of the Sewage Facilities Act. And we should uh, send a reply to Mr. Wagner. And I believe Peter was gonna work on that. Oh, no. Yeah. He's not home right now. I know. Um, McCarthy Engineering provided us with an updated cost estimate of 9,951,500 it was hard saying that dollar amount. Um, next step is the income study and Colleen Terry from Econ Partners has given us Joe Boldaz as our contact person. So I guess we can start a letter, um, put information in it, maybe get some input from your office sure. and put all the information that we have currently and send it back so that they know we're not ignoring them. So. One of the first sentences should be that number. Yep. That yeah, yeah. And the income study is is in the works and I mean he's, in he's layman's called. in layman's language, you know, we don't have ten million dollars. <laughs> yeah. He's called here several times for um, requesting information that I sent him. So I'm not quite sure where he is in his process of doing things with this. He come uh, uh, Joe Baldas. Yeah. yeah. He wanted the act by seven thirty seven. He wanted the New yeah. And there's something else you want to But we're still under order oh. to put in sewage system, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Are we at the ends? We're at the ends. I can't yeah. believe we got there. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next section is supervisor's comments. Peter, thank you for managing Zoom. I don't think he has any comments. Um, I do not have the police report in front of me, so I can't review. Uh, I did not, and I apologize because I don't have the computer. Peter makes it sound way more exciting than I probably will. <laughs> so how does he normally do this? Just read it. Just read it. Miles <laughs> patrolled? <laughs> Whatever. Just read it. Well, you know, 760 miles patrolled. So if someone do the math for me, 760 times five. That's quite a bit, you know, $5 a gallon. That, that's, that's the 2,500 that I wanted to give them right then and there. So um, 53.5 patrol hours. So there were uh, three total incidents, five complaints, seven miscellaneous calls for service, um, two commercial residential alarms, eight EMS and fire advisories, eight traffic stops, 18 citations issues, on um, two non-traffic citations and 39 security checks this past month. Okay. Do you want the engineer report? Oh, thank you. I'll take the engineer report too. Uh, so we already reviewed the uh, culvert report and the bidding report. Um, actually, we did discuss everything mm -hmm. on this list already. So, okay, so we're good there. Um, I really don't have any further comments other than to thank Dan Klein for all of his assistance uh, with doing all the research that we need to do to put together the last of the packet from Stone Group. And just to let you know, Andy, we're gonna compile all of the old bills that we found. And I think it's basically going back to 2014. I'm hoping to get that information over to your office in the next uh, week or two. Okay. So we could send them a final letter saying, this is the remainder of the bills according to the contract. These are the items that should be paid that we have no receipts for. If they could produce receipts, I'm more than happy to uh, sign it off, but we only found billing and thanks to Dan back to 2014, there was nothing older than that, that he came across. Okay. So 
Um, and thank you again for all your assistance with that as well. Sure. And I just want to say thank you to Sue a million times over. Um, I, I don't think the town realizes how much Sue does. And this office could not run without her. I mean, I, I, we, we joke about it at home when I say I'm going to the office and, and my husband says, because Sue's your boss, I go, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I, a thousand times over, I have never worked with someone that is so incredible as Sue. She just Thanks. makes everything so much better. And I think everyone should say, this town really needs to have like Some a thank you Sue day. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but she, she makes, she makes everything run smoothly and she works really, really hard. And I, I really hate it when people give her a hard time because she does so much and really doesn't, doesn't get the pay and, and the gratitude that she deserves in, in that office every day. So I want to say it right here. So thank you. thank you. No, thank you. You make everything easier for me. So and I think Butch has been doing a good job too. Yes, thank he's, you, Butch. He's got yes, a great yes. tan. He must be out there doing something. <laughs> you look good. Can you pass that back? Uh, he's busy. <laughs> Jim, do you have any the only, only, I just want to, on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Brown and Mr. and Mrs. Morris, who uh, we were kind enough to waive the stormwater management, they both asked that I thank the board for doing so and making life a little easier. Uh, I understand that, that that would have cost them several thousand dollars to have stormwater management done to put in a shed. So thank goodness we were understanding and they were, they were very pleased. Thank you. Andy, do you have any comments for us? Nothing additional. Thank you thank again you. for all your help. Your office is a huge support to us. So. Yeah, more than welcome, it's our yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Sue, do you have any comments? I do not. Thank you. And everyone okay if we adjourn the meeting then? Yes. Okay. Oh, Kelly wanted to say something. Yes, Kelly. MCCA. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, we had our committee picnic this past Friday, right. 26, and it was a success. We had about 15 presidents. Wow. Um, and wow. That's nice. Like that. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. It was nice sweet weather too. It was. Yeah. Cool. Did you have a lot of people come through? Some. Yeah, it's hard with the stairs. So yeah, thank you. All right, nothing further, then I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 8, 12 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned.